what I want to talk about today is something that uh, my Father in Heaven has been showing me, and it's something that I, maybe many other people, maybe all of you out there have seen this, and, or some of you anyway, but it's, it's really two things that a lot of times I don't think people, at least, and I didn't, understand what true holiness really means and what righteousness really means. Um, but the Father has shown me that there is a connection to both of them uh, through the Ruach or the Holy Spirit. Um, I'll start off by reading from Genesis uh, 1, 26 through 29. And it says, And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, our likeness. And let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over all the creeping creatures that creep upon the ground. And Elohim created the man in his image. In his image he, of Elohim, he created him, male and female. Sorry, uh, transgender, LGBTQ people, but there's only two genders. Oh, really? ABC people. Yeah, sorry, ABC people. But, uh, but anyway, uh, he says, uh, see, and Elohim said, See, I have given you every plant that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it is for food. Now, the thing that I get from this is that the entire creation was united as one, but was composed of multitudes of living things, including man. The nature of Elohim is unity of mind and purpose. This is holiness, and by obedience to the word, John 1, 1, 3, uh, 1, 1 through 3, that's talking about Yeshua, by which the creation was created, so they, holiness and obedience, are connected together as one. And if we all have his new nature, we are one in Messiah Yeshua. Now let us examine this new nature together, shall we? And the key to wisdom is the name of Elohim, the name Elohim. It is a key to understanding both holiness and righteousness. And our two, they, these two terms are what I fear many do not properly comprehend correctly. What we must understand is that the Elohim is a plurality uh, that we call Yahweh or God. But we, what we fail to understand is the fact that the word holy actually means to be separated from that which is impure or unclean in the biblical context. And what I mean to say is that, and this will, I will use this illustration as an example, suppose you have a group of men that are under your rule and authority, and suppose you are a military leader, and I've been in the military, so I kind of understand that, and if what you command is not obeyed by every member precisely as you commanded, then your body is made weaker by those that do not agree with and or obey you. Holiness can only exist when the entire body is of one accord. And the mind working together in complete and faithful obedience to the head, and in our case, that is, for believers that is, that head is Messiah Yeshua. And then in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, it says, I would have you know the head of every man is Messiah, the head of every one is the man, the head of Messiah is Yahweh. 1 Corinthians uh, 11, 3. Now returning to the subject, of the unified body, suppose Elohim 
had been this way. Suppose that the sun aspect of the Elohim disagreed with the, and no longer was uh, a member of a unified member or of one mind with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit uh, aspects of Elohim. What would be the result? I'm going to tell you. This is what I've I've seen. And it may shock some of you. Some of it, it probably won't. You'll have to, excuse me, I'm slow. I was slow in school, but I got through it. Now, I will maintain this as truth. The result of division, lack of unity, not being of one mind, one faith, one, one spirit, one body, this is the state or condition of believers now and today. And by this I mean that those not of the same mind as Elohim are by their lack of being unified in thought and actions are a hindrance to the entire body and thus must be like a cancerous tumor cut out. This is why Yahweh says in the Torah, anyone that will not, will not hear and will not obey, they are to be cut off. Yeshua uses that example in John 15 when he talks about, I am the vine and my father is the husbandman. And all those that are in me, if they, he says, and I'm paraphrasing, if they don't bear fruit, he cuts them off. You know, you know, there's, um, there's so much more rich, Understanding in John 14 and 15 that it's mind-boggling. You could, you could, you could preach a, a for two or three hours or maybe a day or two. I don't know on those. Now these are those that I believe Yeshua was talking about when he said, "Depart from me, you workers of depart from me, you workers of lawlessness," which is found in Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter seven, and I'll. I'll go over it real quick. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. And by the way, I found out that whenever the Bible says, Lord, Lord, or Holy, Holy, it's really, it's w their way, in a Hebraic way of putting in an exclamation mark. Like in modern English, we say something and we put an exclamation mark there. But for them, by repeating it like that, it was it really emphasizing that word, like we do with an exclamation mark. Matter of fact, they didn't have vowel points or anything in Hebrew until about the 7th century A.D. The Masoretes kind of messed things up. <laughs> but anyway, he said, um, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And what is his will? that we are to obey his commandments, for they are our life, literally. Man shall not live by bread alone, as Yeshua said to the devil, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yahweh. That's found in Deuteronomy 8, uh, 3. He says, and on that day, Many of them will say to thee, Did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. We don't have a relationship. See, you, if, you're not, if you're not pressing in and seeking the word of God and its meaning and how it should affect you and how you should live by it, with everything you've got, and I mean everything you've got, you've got to put it first. It's got to be, it's like I see guys, I watch YouTube sometimes, I see these guys that are hunting for gemstones or gold, and these guys go through literally H-E double hockey sticks, you know, <laughs> to get to what they want. They press in, they dig down, they go hundreds and thousands of feet. They take, I've seen one guy, he spent his entire life, his entire life with, uh, with uh, chisels and hammers and drilled a hole a mile through a whole mountain, from one side of a mountain to the other. I've been there when I was six years old with my dad. We walked all the way through that, and you could see Nevada on the other side. 
to see Death Valley. This guy, it took him 60-something years to do this. But that's just, that's the whole thing. It takes absolute 100% dedication. Now, the devil's going to use the world around you like he did with Peter when he was trying to walk on water. He's going to take and blow on you. He's going to lightning and thunder and people and noises and everything else to try to distract you. I've even got cats that bother me when I'm trying to do stuff. They'll be meowing and scratching on the door wanting something. And then you open the door and they just look at you like, what? <laughs> That's how cats are, you know. You exist to serve them, you know, not the other way around. Anyway, uh, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And uh, we know that lawlessness means disobedience to the Torah. Hey, Brother Vern, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who built his house on a rock, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew. And see, this is like Peter, you know, trying to walk on water. And uh, the house was still there, it didn't fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And that rock is faith. It's faith. Faith in the word. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them, will I will liken them to a foolish man who built his house on sand. And yes, indeed, you would be foolish to build your house on sand. And then the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And there's a lot of people that are professing to, to know Yeshua, and you're professing to love God, but their works don't testify to that. Uh, I said this in a letter the other day I was writing. I said, you know, Yeshua did not sit on a pew to hear a sermon in the synagogue, then rush home and get change clothes and run out to the chariot races to see what was happening. He did not do that. He didn't, but he didn't waste his time on foolishness, and neither should we. We have to take and stay. We, I mean, it's okay to have a little fun every now and then or maybe watch a movie or something as long as it's not. But there's hardly any of them you can watch nowadays that don't have a lot of sex or immoral behavior or a lot of foul language and everything else. But, um, but that's really what... What holiness is about is it's about separateness. We are to be separate like Yahweh, like Elohim. Elohim. This is another thing. When they sinned, when they listened to a voice other than Elohim, they listened to Hasatan, the serpent, they were corrupted. He twisted the words. And they were deceived. Eve was deceived. And Adam, he's standing there like, I don't know, Lot, just, he was like, I don't know, blinded by her beauty or something. I don't know what happened. But anyway, she gave him this, this, this fruit. And this is another thing about the fruit, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Do you ever wonder why it's the only thing that says it's got two aspects to it, good and evil? Why would Yahweh want us to have anything to do with evil? It's like, if, I don't know, some people, have you ever eaten uh, poke salad? Poke salad is uh, pretty tasty, but it's also poisonous. And you can't eat the berries. You can use them to paint with, like if you're a little kid, you know, painting on the rocks or something. But even then, it might get in your skin and cause you problems. But you have to actually wash it and boil it two or three times to get the whatever it is that's inside of poke, the poke salad uh, to, before it's safe to eat. Well, that's what we have to do with the, the word of the, with the word of anybody other than Yahweh. It's got to be filtered. It's got to be compared to the word of God. And without that kind of that kind of pickiness, I guess it will, you know, carefulness, 
you're going to be tricked up and you're going to be led astray and you're going to hear things and not test and see what they if they really agree with the word of Yahweh and that's going to lead you astray and you're going to get off you know a lot of times you get into habits of believing certain things a certain way and you live your life by that doctrine and it's it's uh, mind-boggling when you find out that you believe something a certain way all your life and find out that it was a big lie. Now, contained with Elohim is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are united in absolute agreement. And we were created in that image. And that is Elohim, and we were we were like Elohim as we were created as the Father, Adam, Adam, the Son, and the Holy Spirit aspects of the Elohim, the beginning, in the beginning. And we were one in purpose, in mind, until we made a big, cho a big fatal mistake that we read about in Genesis 3, which I was talking about before, about the serpent coming along and having to mess everything up. And, you know, Eve is standing there, and she's looking at that tree. And I'm sure that the serpent was probably in the tree uh, of good knowledge of good and evil and tempting her. Like, like he did with Yeshua when he, Yeshua is this, he's coming out of a 40-day fast and he's starving, literally, to death. And he says, if you be the son of God, command these stones down here to turn into bread. And, Yahweh, and Yeshua told him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of the, that comes out of the mouth of God. Uh, and as a brother Daniel says, he defeated the devil with three verses right out of the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, he kicked his booty. And that's the thing. A lot of people don't realize that you have, as a believer, you have the same authority. Uh, Yeshua gives us the same authority. And if he lives in you, if he is in you, because you have the Ruach or the Holy Spirit in you, you have the same authority. He has given us that same authority to overcome the devil in every aspect and in every way that he comes at us, and he will come, he looks and probes for every possible way, like a snake trying to crawl under the door jams or whatever, looking for a way to get in so he can bite somebody. Now, it says in the scriptures that these three, there are three that, uh, that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. That ties right in with the whole concept of Elohim. Okay. And then it says that, that uh, there are the, the wit there are witnesses. They bear witnesses in the earth and the spirit. The, the, it says the heavens and the earth. That the earth, the spirit, and the water, and the blood. These three are also agree in one. That's 1 John 5, 7 through 8. Now... I'll skip over this part because it, it can be considered a little ris risque. <laughs> Talking about how the nature of human beings are. Man, the man, he is the giver of seed. The woman is the receiver of the seed. And the son is the product of that, that union. And I know it's all soul level or, you know, spiritual, spiritualized. And a lot of people just aren't going to be able to understand that. It's just going to be way over their head. It almost is over my head sometimes. But see, the problem is, when Adam and Eve, when they did what they did, they lost their connection because they became, disconnect they became disconnected from Elohim. They were no longer one with Elohim. Okay? And not, not only them, but the entire creation, all the animals, everything, lost their connection through Adam. Because Adam had been given and never did lose authority over the earth or the animals on the earth. We, who, who's subduing the earth? Man. Not the devil. The devil, he's too lazy. He lets us mess it up, you know. So, but, you know, Paul explains this principle too. And it's, I think it's a good way to think. Uh, uh, he, if you will, uh, if you will turn, if you if you have a, a Bible at uh, home with you. And by the way, 
I, uh, I ex insist that anybody that has the Word of God handy, uh, I'm, a, I'm just a man. I'm fallible. I can misquote something I uh, have before. I can misunderstand something. But the Word of God is always true. The Word of God is always right. So don't trust any one, any man, his word or his speech. Verify it like the Bereans. Make sure that what they're saying is in the Scriptures and agrees with what the Scripture says. And now moving on, uh, Paul talks about in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27, he talks about just as a body is one, but has many members, and all the members of the body. Oh, I'm sorry. You would think my old time Pentecostal, you know, apprenticeship would have, be, I'd have enough voice to carry without it. But uh, it's probably the devil causing trouble. We rebuke you, Satan, right now, and I get lost. And I mean that seriously. Um, so it says, so we are all one body, so it is with Christ, our Messiah. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews, Greeks, slaves, free, and all were made to drink of that one spirit. Now that's something I hadn't even considered, drink of the spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but many, and we know this. And if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would make the make it any would it make it any less part of the body? No. And if the ear said, uh, because I am not the eye, I do not belong to the body, that would make it any less part of the body, or would that make it any less part of the body? And the answer, of course, is no. And if the whole uh, whole body was an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? Or if the whole body was an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as that, it is as God has arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose, and if all were a single member, where would the body be? Now, this ties right in with something the Father's been showing me concerning people that don't we don't agree with or I don't agree with. I mean, I don't agree with myself on some things, but it's the only thing I got, you know. And I know there's something more but I, on a particular subject, but I just haven't found it yet. So I stick with what I, what I think I know. But we're not to criticize or make fun of or mock other people just because their faith is different than ours, their understanding is different than ours. We're all the same, we're all cut from the same fabric, every last one of us. And yeah, there are people that say and do things that are really, really, really against the word of Yahweh. And those people have to be stood up to. Those people have to be chastised verbally uh, and if they're in a, can, and, and if those people are in a, an assembly, the el it's up to the elders of that assembly to put them out. Ca caution them, warn them, correct them if possible, and then put them out if they won't repent. And that's something that people have to understand. A lot of people like that, oh, we, we can't judge. Yeah, yes, you, you have to judge some things. I mean, if somebody knocks on the car window while you're at a stoplight and, uh, you don't know them, and they look like they're like a satanic follower. They got like a devil or a devil star and tattooed on their chest, and they got a billy club in their hand. You don't open the window to see what they want, do you? No. <laughs> you just stomp on the gas and pray and be like certain people that believe that they can drive through intersections without checking. Faith, you know. And Yahweh gives us a little wisdom, a little bit more sense. We're, that's why he gave us eyes, eyes and ears, you know. So anyway, it, it really culminates in one thing. He says, if we are all one body, then, then the members that we have, we have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, we all suffer together, and that's true. You know, you think about it, he's talking about a family, and this is how we need to consider the body of Messiah, it's like your family. If you have brothers and literal physical brothers and sisters, a mom and dad, uncles and aunts, uh, good friends, whatever, 
um, if they're hurting or if they've got a problem, how is it you don't? You know, if you love people, if you love these people, you, you've got a relationship with these people, um, you know, it affects you. And I can tell you uh, from personal experience, and this is a sad moment in my life, but 28 years ago, this, July, this uh, August 29th, our youngest son, Stephen, was killed in a car wreck. He's riding in the back of a pickup truck, which they still will not outlaw in this state for some reason. But no seat belts. You, you, get, you, get a, you can get a ticket for not wearing a seat belt in the car, but no, no ticket for riding in the back of a pickup without anything. Go figure that. But, uh, you know, at the, it, it took us two weeks to have the funeral because they kept his body. And when they finally brought him back to the funeral home and prepared him, everything, we were able to view him, it was totally heartbreaking. And uh, i never forget the last thing he told me before he, that, that early morning, with the, the last day of his life. He, uh, I was getting ready to go to work, and he said, Dad, he said, uh, I said, what? He said, uh, can you bring me a big box of Cracker Jacks? He was buried with that box of Cracker Jacks. And, and, but the thing is, after, after that, after the, fu the funeral was like, oh, there was the biggest church in town, and there was standing room only, and there was people all outside. The whole community knew us. They knew these two boys. My son's best friend was killed with him. And there must have been several hundred people there. The, the line to the cemetery was over a mile long. And this is a little bitty town of begs. You know, a little, if you blink your eyes, you'll miss it. But it, it reminds me of the fact that when you know somebody, when you have a relationship with somebody, even if they're not even a friend, even if they're just somebody that's a neighbor that lives over yonder in that blue house, but you know about them. If you hear about somebody broke in their house, well, that bothers you. Somebody, one, somebody beat up the guy in his yard, you know, got in a big fight. That bothers you. Somebody, he got hurt. He fell off his roof. That bothers you. Or it should. And they, you, you're, they're your neighbor. Then they're not, there's not a close relationship, but there is a relationship. Because you know them and they know you. Well, that's what we're supposed to be doing, too. That's why I said that Yeshua didn't sit around. He moved. He got out and he get out, got out amongst the people. And he expects us to get out amongst the people and to talk and to preach. He said, the Great Commission said, go into all the nations and teach them whatsoever I have commanded. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Elohim, in that authority. We're... We, they, if we're dedicated, I mean, yes, you have to stop, you have to sleep, you have to eat, you have to bathe yourself, you have, maybe you have to have a job and go work some part of the time, but when you're not busy taking care of what you have to do to stay alive, you should be busy about the Father's work. He's been convicting me. I, I don't watch anything hardly at all on, and I don't watch TV at all. I watch some stuff on YouTube because I can pick and choose what I want. Every once in a while, I get surprised by some filthy language, and I just I unsubscribe, I unsubscribe, unsubscribe to those people, because that's another thing that we need to understand. Us hanging around people, we're commanded not to hang around those kind of people. Any of those kind of people, uh, I mean, we can talk to them, but you don't want to necessarily fellowship with people that whose eyes and ears and their whole heart is constantly on something that's wrong. Um, they can affect you. They can pollute you. Now, I'll give you a good example of that. In, um, let's see, I got it right here. Um, there was a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. And she had heard about Yeshua that he could just touch somebody. And she also had knew this knew the prophecy that he shall the sun shall rise with healing in his wings, which is in re direct reference to the Z seats, tassels that we were commanded to wear. 
And there's this big crowd. People are thronging him. He's the miracle worker. He's the Messiah. Everybody knows who he is. I mean, they're, they're just, he's an idol. He's like a rock star, a spiritual rock star, you know. And this woman who has had a, a bleed, a menstrual bleeding sign, I don't know if it's, it was like fibroid cyst or what it was, but she had something wrong in her female parts, and she had bled for 12 years. And what a lot of people don't understand is that made her basically a leper. Nobody, if anybody knew that she had was like was like that, they wouldn't touch her because they were afraid that they would be defiled. As a matter of fact, Yahweh says that you shall not sit where they are, you shall not come in contact with them, you will be unclean until you have to wash yourself, and you'll be unclean until the sun goes down. People didn't want to be that inconvenienced. And so anyway, this woman reaches out and as he passes by and grabs one of the seat seats, it says the hem of his garment, but we're pretty sure it was the seat seat. His tassel, yeah. It does, oh, it does say that, okay. So, so he immediately stops and he says, who touched me? He doesn't know everything. And his disciples said, Lord, there's like a thousand people around you and they're all touching you. He said, no, I felt virtue. I felt holiness leave me. Who did it? And this woman was down, on, knelt down, and she was crying. And she said, it was me. It was me, Lord. I heard about you. I knew that if I just touched you, I knew it in my heart. If I just touched you, that I would be healed. And she was. And he loved her. And he told her. Stand up. He didn't. He didn't condemn her. And I'll tell you something. A, another son, a personal story that ties in with this. My wife, when she was 12 years old, came down with rheumatic fever. She was in the Philippines. That's where she's from. And she's a Catholic. Was she's not too much of a Catholic anymore. I've been. Uh, I've been corrupting her. <laughs> I've been chiseling at her for 49 years. Uh, but um, they have these processions where they carry statues around, you know, of Mother Mary and Jesus and stuff on the cross and all that. And for some reason, and she had never read this in the Bible. They, didn't, they don't read Bibles. They used to didn't anyway. They just, whatever the priest says, that's, that's the Word of God. Uh, not saying that they don't preach the Word of God. I'm just saying that's, that's, they don't really have Bibles that they carry around. Most people don't. Anyway, she had it in her head, her 12-year-old mind, that uh, and she, she was going to be an angel. They have the, the girls all dressed up in little angel costumes and, you know, with coat hanger wings, you know. And she, her mom didn't want to let her go. But she begged and pleaded with her mother, and her mother said, okay, but just go watch it. So here she is. She's dressed up like an angel. They're in this procession, and Yeshua, the statue of him, is coming by. And she reaches out, and she knows it. And she has this belief in her mind, and I believe Yahweh put it there, that if I can just touch him, I'll be healed. And you know what? Instantly, the fever broke. It just had been going on for days. And she broke out into a sweat, and she was her fever went down. And her mother was, of course, praising God. Everybody, it was a miracle. And it was faith, her faith in, in the word of God, or the, that God himself would heal her. I did the same thing. Years later, I went to Jerusalem in 91, and I brought home some water from the River Jordan, or maybe it was from somebody's tap. No, I'm pretty sure it was from the River Jordan because it had stuff floating around in it, floaties in it, and I'm not sure what it was. But she had problems with skin rashes all the time, real bad, you know, bit bumps all over. And when I brought that home and gave it to her and told her this is, comes from the place where Jesus was baptized, which anybody's guess of where it was, it was in the Jordan somewhere. And it healed her. Her belief that that water would heal her healed her, and she's never had a problem since with rashes or any, any skin conditions whatsoever. See, and... and 
See, that's not a matter of what you know. It's what you believe. It's, you know, if, and that's what Yeshua, that's what Yeshua said to Peter when he started sinking. He said, oh, you have little faith. Why did you, why did you, why did you lose your faith? You had it. You were walking on the water, meeting me out here in the water. And then you let the, the circumstances around you, you let the fake reality of this world get your attention away from looking at me, keeping your eye on me. And you lost, you lost it. So that's what we got to watch out for. Now you can't just, you just can't trust your eyes. As they say, don't trust your lying eyes. <laughs> There's an old saying about only read, only read half of what you read and nothing of what you hear. Something to that effect. Um, here is a, an, ex an illustration that um, a lot of people maybe miss, but I, I've seen this. So just as a branch of a fruit tree is, if it is pruned or cut off, it will die. So to a man, if he is cut off through disobedience, he too shall die. And that's what, that's what was going on when, when uh, Yahweh booted Adam and Eve, our earth parents, out of the garden. They, they couldn't exist in the same environment with him because they were tainted. They were unholy now. They were not, they were not connected to the Elohim, the, the mind. They weren't one with the mind, the mind of God. And I believe, it's my, my personal opinion, that what they did is they lost the, the rock. They lost the spirit. All they had left was the flesh. And that's why they saw themselves as being naked for the first time once they had ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, I know a lot of people think that that's symbolic, and maybe it is to a certain extent. But Yahweh doesn't want us to mix anything. That's why, and I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I've read this scripture. It talks about, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And we're not to, we're not to be able to we're not supposed to mix divi diverse seeds when we're planting. We're not supposed to interbreed our different our livestock. Uh, a, don a, a mule is a blatant example of that. Uh, you know, it's it's an abominable creature, really. Not poor mule, but they didn't have a say so. But uh, and diverse clothes and nowadays. Uh, you can't, you can't hardly find clothes that are just pure cotton or pure anything. They're mixed with, even if they say they are, you know they're probably lying. <laughs> they got Dacron and nylon and, I, I don't know, acrylics and all kinds of chi chemicals and stuff all mixed in with them. So I guess we're just mixed up people running around with mixed up things. Well... We have a, a commandment. It says, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy, which I had just been saying. And that's found in Leviticus 19, 2, and 3. Uh, and this is one thing that I found that really stuck out to me. It says, For I, the Lord your God, am holy. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. Can you so think about that? What's the connection between us respecting our parents, showing love and respect for our parents, and keeping the Sabbath? Exactly. It's a they are they, they, there's a connection between the natural and the spiritual in the keeping of the Sabbath. We're here today on His day. And we are resting from our works. We don't, you know, we we do all that we can to not do anything that is contrary to his wishes. If you love him. And we love him. Now, there is a, uh, there is this thing that's called by faith is in the holy word of Yahweh, Elohim. That is, in his instructions, we become reconnected to Yahweh, Elohim. That is why Yeshua the Son says these words in John's Gospel. 
If you love me, now this is something that really sticks out to me, and a lot of people, it, it used to go over my head, but now I catch on to it. It says, if you love me, you will keep my commandment, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, neither does it see him or know him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. That's John 14, 15 through 17. And it's in another scripture, it says, And Jesus answered, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come into him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. And that's found in John 14, 23 through 24, and 15, 10. Now there is, as I said, a law that's contained in the Torah that says that anything that comes in contact with anything that is holy becomes holy. And this is where I'm tying this in. The fact, the fact is that because Yeshua, the Father, and the Ruach HaKodesh indwell in us, we are made holy. You, as long as they are in you, the Word is in you. That's why we're supposed to meditate on the Word day and night and when we walk by the way and when we're sitting, uh, sitting, talking to your friends at the restaurant, whatever, because it's constantly renewing our connection to the Father and keeping us filled up with holiness. Now, I, I talk to people all the time. I talk to some uh, people, uh, and they tell me that they can sense people that are evil when they come in contact with somebody that's evil, and they see that as a, the Holy Spirit working them to point out somebody, yeah, that person, you know, stay away from them, they're, they're bad news. Uh, or they sometimes hear things, the, the Lord tells them things through the Holy Spirit. And when you lose your edge, when you lose your connection, you lose your sight and you lose your hearing, okay? So that's why you're supposed to stay filled up with the Word constantly and the spirit is in the word matter of fact does it not say that the law is spiritual yeah. it does paul says that that old mean old paul who did away with the, the commandments and told everybody not to keep them yeah right P peter peter has some words for him and in, in second peter 3 15 16 and 17 he says that paul says things that are for a lot of people, too hard to understand. But only the ignorant and unstable uh, are the ones that are affected by his words. And they twist the scriptures as they do the other, they, they twist the, his words as they do the other scriptures. And if you stop and think of it, that explains a lot of why people, especially Galatians 3 and 4, he gets confusing. But they don't understand that the law he's talking about is oral Torah. He's not talking about the written word because he, 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 he looks like he's like flip-flopping, but he's not. You read in Acts and stuff, the things he does, you read uh, in any of his epistles where he's talking about, he's talking about the law is good, the law is perfect. The problem with the law is not the law, it's us, our carnal nature. And that's why we have to have, that's why Yeshua said in John 3, uh, the first uh, several verses, Except you be born again, born of the water and the spirit, you will not gain entrance into the kingdom of God. You know, you've got to be holy. Only holy people get into a holy place. You know, and what, it, and, you know, even, uh, even Peter says that that place that we're looking for, and Second Peter, if you read a little bit further along, he said, we're looking, seeing that you have, know that you have, you are seeking this, this kingdom to come. He said, know this, that it is a place that we are looking for, that we have, it's our hope. We're waiting for it to come down to us. He said, for it is a place where righteousness dwells. Okay? So, now, uh, I've already covered the, the woman with the, the, the blood, issue of blood. Um, now, I want to be clear about something, and I, I, I really do. We are, all of us, connected to one another by actual in, the actual indwelling presence of Yahweh. 
in each of us, he lives in each of us, that are filled with the Spirit, that is. We have become the place where Yahweh, our Elohim, has chosen to dwell, as we read in John 14. Uh, we are both individually and collectively stones in the temple of Yahweh. Thus, since he ha is holy and we are holy by his indwelling presence, and now righteousness is absolutely and directly related to being in a constant state of holiness. I mean, think about it. If you are holy by the presence of the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the Father himself, all three, the Elohim, if you are made holy by their presence, actually literally, literally in your flesh, that makes you holy. You can't be, you cannot be unrighteous. It's not possible. Matter of fact, it says uh, in uh, the Little Johns, I forget now the exact passage, but it talks about the seed that remaineth in it. We cannot sin because his seed, talking about Yeshua, abides in it, remains in us. It's constantly working to work out all the dross. It's kicking out all the, all the, the bad and the negative and the corrupt things that are in our mind and, you know, that's our spirit. That's why, I mean, what do you think, why do you think that Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden? That's the sin. They were, they were booted out. And, you know, this is something that I was reading this morning that really made me think. You know, it says that there was two cherubim, so they have to be, everything has to be, to guard, they, they didn't say they guarded the gate. They were by the gate, or the entrance it is into the, the paradise. But there was a flaming sword that turned every which way. Now, does it not say in the scriptures that the word of God is a flaming sword? A sword? The sword? is a, Yeah. What do you want to bet that, that that sword is a representation of Yeshua? Because does he not also say that I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. And he also says, no one gets in to the kingdom. No one gets in except through me. I am the door. I'm the gate. Remember, he says in John, uh, I mean, Matthew 7, he says that, you know, he, he says, I mean, he says very clearly that except you uh, follow through the narrow passage, the narrow gate, enter into the narrow gate and the narrow path, uh, and which is a hard thing to do. Yes, it is. It requires all your attention and all your efforts. If you don't do those things, you're not going to make it. If you choose the easy way, the lazy way, like he says, the wide is the gate and broad is the path that leads to destruction, and many there are that go in thereat. So we don't want to do that. And this is, this is what a lot of people don't understand, and I didn't understand it that we have to maintain our condition of holiness through constantly pressing in. I know a lot of people say, oh, God, that's too much work. No, uh, if your life depended on it, and it does, if your life depended on it and they gave you a bottle of pills and said you got to take one at 6 o'clock in the morning, one at 12 o'clock, and one at 9 o'clock at night, or you're going to die, uh, and you really wanted to live, and you really believed what they were telling you, you'd probably make sure that you took those pills exactly when and where and how they told you to take them if you wanted to keep keep, uh, keep breathing. Well, the Word of God's like that. The Word of God, it says, is literally our life. Yes. We were talking earlier about how Yahweh takes his time, our, what we consider our time, 20, 25, 30 years for him to fulfill a promise. We're still waiting on Yeshua to return. That's been almost 2,000 years. But we, we, because we have this hope, as it says in the one of the little Johns, we are purified by that hope. We are made pure by that hope. That faith, our faith is what, keeps us pure because our faith is coupled with loving Yahweh and keeping his word. That's what faith is. It's not just believing. In James 2, he says, you believe in one God, the devils do, and they tremble. They fear. I mean, they know enough to be afraid. 
And they believe in God, but just because you believe, they're not doing any good works. That's why they're called devils. <laughs> hint, hint. You know, they believe. That didn't get them saved. And they couldn't be saved if they wanted to, according to the book of Enoch. <laughs> now, it says um, in Hebrews 12, 14 and 15, it says, Strive for peace with everyone. We were just talking about that earlier. And for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. You can't get in. In other words, where is he at? Well, he physically, I guess, in a manner of speaking, we don't really understand. He has a throne in the heavens. And we won't be able to actually go into the place of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, without holiness. When we can't see Yahweh. Like right now, we can't see Yahweh because if we saw Yahweh, we would be dead. Even though we got the Holy Spirit. If he appeared to us in his true form, this room, uh, the whole earth, everything would be melted, destroyed, vaporized. Kind of like falling into the sun, huh? Um, but it, it goes on in 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18, it tells us, and this is talking about maintaining holiness. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? It doesn't. Or what fellowship has a light with darkness? Or what accord does Christ with Billy Isle? Billy Isle is like a, a, a demon or evil. Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are all the temple of the living God. And as God has said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says Yahweh. And touch not the unclean thing. Then I will come, I will welcome you and I will be your father to you. And you shall be my children and uh, to, and to me, and says the Lord Almighty. And that's 2 Corinthians uh, 6, 14, I said, and 15, 2, 18. Now, we are, we are just like the pattern that Mo we are to be just like the pattern that Yahweh showed Moses in heaven. And it says, and let, their, let them make them, me a sanctuary that I may dwell in their midst, exactly as I show you concerning the pattern of the tabernacle and of all its furniture. So shall it be made, Exodus 25, 8 through 9. They serve a copy and a shadow of heavenly things. For when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed by God, saying, See that you make everything according to the pattern. What is our pattern? Yeshua. He's our example. He's what we're, he's a goal that we are aiming for. Be like him. That's, a, that's in Hebrews 8, verse 5. Now, Somehow I got that mixed up. Um, this is what I want to close on. Well, actually, there's two things, this and something else. Um, there is no wiggle room for a believer in Yeshua. And a lot of people, older people might know what I'm talking about, wiggle room. Now, we must all be fashioned after the heavenly pattern of Yeshua, as in this we will be restored to our former image, created in the image of Elohim. In other words, we're being, we're being unified in one mind, in one body, in one spirit through Yeshua. We, we, become, after, we become like, it says in Genesis 1, or uh, the first chapter, not Genesis 1, but Genesis, I think it's Genesis 1, 20-something, 20 26. Let us make man in our image. Elohim said, let us make man in our image. We're being restored to the image of Elohim, the image of Yeshua, because he was part of the, the Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And um, we are being restored to the image of Elohim before the rebellion as he, the last Adam, was a faithful and obedient, so must we be, or else we will be rejected as unclean and lawless, having our place with the unbelievers with hell, waiting to consume us in his everlasting and unquenchable fires. 
Nobody wants to be there. I don't want a I don't want a luxury condo on the lake of fire, the shores, you know. You can you can have that. So th this is something else I wanted to share. It's a person. <laughs> I know, but you can have the you can have the. I, I don't need a window view or nothing. You, know, you can, yeah, you can just have that. I'm 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 good with just where I'm at. If I can if I can just be. Uh, a stable boy in the Lord's stables, you know, sweeping up horse poop. I'll, I'll be, hey, as long as I'm there, you know. But I, I may not, I may not get that, but you never know. But there's something that I wanted to share with you, a personal thing that it kind of ties along with what you were saying other, earlier about your wife, brother. You know, last night, about 5, 30, 6 o'clock, I was starting to get hungry, kind of like Peter was in Acts 10. <laughs> And uh, I got it. My wife was gone. She went off somewhere, went to a store or something. And uh, I had opened up a can of Denny Moore beef stew and some crackers. And that's, that was my dinner for the night. And I used to be able to eat, inhale two or three of them. I was, I was all I could do to eat that one can with the crackers and stuff. Oh, and there was a bite or two of leftover potato salad. And I mean really a bite or two. And that was, that was going to be my dinner. And I was kind of full. Well, about a half an hour later, my dear little wife comes walking in with a plate with a big bowl of beef stew that she had made that I knew nothing about. And handmade biscuits with butter on them and everything. And so I, I said, thank you. And she set it down on this little table by my bed. And I got to thinking about it, and the Lord was showing me, he said, you know, you need to eat that. And, and, and he explained to me why. Her effort, her love, was something that I have to honor. And he always showed me that if you, are to, if you can honor someone who loves you and does things for you, like your wife or a good friend, how is it you can't honor me and do things for me? And what does he want for us to do? He wants us to be saved. He wants us to bow down and humble ourselves so that we can get, so that the enemy cannot have anything in us. Like Yeshua said, the, the, the prince of this world is coming in John, I think it's John 14 or John 15, he says, and he has nothing in me. Let it be that the prince of this world has nothing in us. And he, how is that? I'll tell you. They always showed me, taught me this. If you are so full of the word of Yahweh and the spirit of Yahweh is in you, there's no room for the devil. Amen. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. That's it. Thank you for bearing with me. I'm not very good. I'm better at writing than talking. Except whenever I'm talking about something I, I'm really into. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. This mic is hot. I'm going to go ahead and share it too. If you guys need to use the bathroom, take a quick break, but I'm going to go ahead and set this back up, and I'm going to just get into it. It's not going to be very long with me. But we're going to talk about fasting today because the Father wants us to understand what it is, what it's for, the purpose of it. And I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts on how to do it necessarily, but just basically what it's all about the purpose of it because it's very important and um, we need to understand it That's true. We are one flesh. And, and the thing.